Hey, it's Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. Today we're looking at the double seed stitch, or it's also called the box stitch pattern. We'll work the pattern, we'll look at the chart and the written instructions, and stick around to the end because I'll show you how to bind off following the pattern. In this video, we're going to look at double seed stitch, which can also be called box stitch, or if you're in the UK or Australia, you might hear it referred to as double moss stitch or box stitch. It has lots of different names, but it's the same pattern. Let's start by looking at the chart. If you look at the first two rows, you can see that it's a knit two, purl two pattern. And if we just continued that, then we would have a knit two, purl two rib. But on the third row, we break that pattern and we start with a purl two, knit two. So we end up with these little boxes. Hence the name box stitch. It is a multiple of four stitches and it's a four row repeat. You can see that right here. This is the repeat right here. On the first row, you knit two, purl two, and then on the second row, you follow the same pattern, or you would basically work the stitches as they present to continue that pattern. And then on row three, we break that, what would end up being a rib if we continued, and we start with a purl two, and then a knit two across the row. And then on row four, you would work the stitches as they present by purling and knitting them. And then on row five, you would go back to this right here. All right, so I'm ready to work another row and I'm on the right side of my work and I can see two purl stitches right there. So I know the next row, the next set of rows I'm working, I'm back to my knit two, purl two, so I can break up this pattern and create that box stitch. We switch this pattern up every two rows and it gives us those little boxes. So on the right side of the work, if I didn't have my pattern, all I have to remember is if I'm on the right side, I am breaking that pattern. So if I see a, a knit stitch, which I do right here, there's a knit stitch, I'm going to purl it. And if I see purl stitches, I'm going to knit them. And then when I come around to the back, after I finish this row, you continue that pattern. see there's my knits and there's my pearls those pearl the heads of the stitches sit right beneath the needle so I'm going to on a wrong side row I don't break the pattern I work the stitches as they present so I will knit two purl two across this row It's a very easy pattern to remember. You just have to know what your stitches look like. You have to be able to tell the difference between a purl stitch and a knit stitch when it's in your work. And that way, whenever you set this down, you'll be able to pick it right back up and continue wherever you left off in the pattern. There, I finished that first set. Okay, now if I had set this down and I couldn't remember where I left off, I can see my cast on edge. I'm on a right side row and I finished with knit stitches. My last row worked was a knit row, so I know to break that pattern I start with purl stitches on this side. So you have to get comfortable with understanding what's happening on your needles and not just following the instructions gives you more confidence, you'll be able to fix any mistakes that you might have. So like the previous front, the right side row, I break the pattern. If I see a purl stitch, I knit it. Now let's say I had set my work down, the phone rang or something, and I just tossed it down and I came back to it. How do I know where I left off? Well, first off, I know that the working yarn is attached to the last stitch worked, and that last stitch worked is on the right needle. So I know I wouldn't turn it this way. That's not the right direction. That last stitch worked is right here on the right. 
So then my next step would be to look. I know it's a knit to purl to or a purl to knit to. I'm on the right side and there's a purl to and I've just worked a purl to. So I know my next two stitches are knit to. So do you understand? Once you know what's happening on your needles, you'll have more confidence and it'll be much easier to pick up your work, fix mistakes. Generally, just be more confident as you knit. Now, let's say I was all finished with my work and I was ready to bind off. If I just knit across the row, I'd have a row of knit stitches and purl stitches on the other side and I wouldn't want that. I want to continue this pattern, this little box stitch. You can see them, all those little stitches. I want to continue that right up to the bind off. So how do I do that? You do what's called binding off in pattern. And that simply means you continue with whatever pattern you're following as you bind off. And in my pattern, I'm on the purl two, knit two. I'm on row four here. Purl two, knit two. So I'm going to do that as I bind off. I'm not going to just knit across the row and bind off. I want to keep the pattern that I've set. So you simply purl or knit following your pattern as you bind off. So there's my purl two and I bind off the first stitch. Then I have a knit. It's easy to bind off on the wrong side row in this pattern because I'm just working the stitches as they present. I don't even have to pay attention to my pattern. So I knit or purl as needed and bind off across the row. That's all there is to binding off in pattern. Now, as I said at the beginning, this stitch pattern, as you can see here, has many different names. So it's important to, if you have a, if you're following a specific pattern, to look at their chart or the written instructions and ensure that you're using the same stitch pattern they call for. I have another video that explains the difference between this pattern and seed stitch and moss stitch. Oops, forgot to bind off right there. So be sure to click and watch that if you're curious to understand the differences between those three patterns. I think I, I counted eight different names for three stitch patterns, so it can be a bit confusing. So go ahead and click over after we're done binding off here and you can watch that video. Next, I've got a purl stitch, so I will purl it and bind it off. So as you can see, binding off in pattern doesn't have to be difficult. And if you like to get a bit nerdy with your knitting, be sure to click the subscribe button down below. There, final few stitches, and we have bound off in pattern. And you can see that pattern is continued right to the top edge. And there is the double seed stitch or the box stitch or double moss stitch. It's all the same pattern.